You're in the kitchen. All right. Welcome to another edition of Kitchen Conversations. Today, we have another singles champion on the show. Two in one week. That is very rare air because there's usually the same people winning at singles. And this week, it was two incredibly amazing stories of individuals that had never broken through in one. And we are very fortunate to have the one and only Hurricane Tyra Black. Welcome. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Tyra, first of all, let's clear. First of all, congratulations. Awesome victory. What a fun uh, week to watch you play. Um, Before we get anywhere with this, can we can we talk about your name? Because there's a lot of debate going on right now, whether it's your middle name. There's a post name in the kitchen nickname. right now. There's a post in the kitchen that says, "Is Hurricane Tyra Black's name actually Hurricane Tyra Black?" So let's clear that up so That's I can right. post and feel confident about Inquiring it. Inquiring minds want to know. So I'm in the kitchen, so I see a lot of these things on Facebook, and I'm just like laughing. I love scrolling through it. It's so much fun. I don't know if I should clear it up. Um, But Hurricane is my middle name. Everyone thinks it's a nickname. They think I have some huge ego, and I'm just, like, calling myself the Hurricane going around, but it's my middle name. And in sports, I put it as my first name because it seems like it sounds cooler, Hurricane Tyra, than Tyra Hurricane. So that's how I have it. You don't seem very egoic. You don't seem like you have an ego. I I mean, I, I don't know you very well, but you seem pretty chill. Yeah, everyone always tells me that my name doesn't fit my personality, so, so. It's a it's a very soft hurricane. It's a very gentle hurricane. Yeah, but it's, it's a very like effective. It passes by Florida, and everyone's just like laughing about it, you know. Right. Exactly. Um, so, Tara, you come from a tennis background, and I I want to hear about your kind of your journey to this point because. It, I don't think it has been easy. I heard your interview, and, and I know I've talked to you before. Um, but tell us about your story. Tell us about your upbringing and how you got to here. So I've been playing tennis since I was three years old. I was on the court before that. My father was a tennis coach, and he had a really big academy in Boca Raton, Florida. So I spent all of my time on the court. Both of my older sisters played tennis. They were all top players. And... I've just been on the court since before I can even remember. And both of my parents had us with the idea of having tennis players in mind. So we were literally bred for tennis. And I played, I was a top junior player most of my life. And then I went into professional tennis at about 14 years old. I was playing a few events, um, but I mostly stayed on the junior side right until I turned 18. And then I did really well at some big tournaments, and then COVID happened, and it was just a really bad experience, to say the least. And I was really miserable playing tennis the whole time. Even when I was younger, I did not want to be out there. I absolutely loved traveling, but I hated playing tennis and being on the court. And when my friend introduced me to pickleball, I absolutely fell in love with it, and I became obsessed, and the rest is history. Let me, let me and, ask and you. And when was that that you got introduced? Sorry? So when when did you get introduced to pickleball? How long ago was that? So I was introduced to it last year, um, probably around summer, but I was still traveling full-time for tennis, so I didn't really get a play. Like, I still thought it was a joke. I didn't like it. I would hear the ball, and I would be super annoyed. I was one of those tennis players. Um, but I'd still go play rec occasionally, um, especially when I was at home. I'd just, like, try and go play at, like, this park nearby. Um, and then when I was at tournaments, I'd be thinking about pickleball. I didn't know what the PPA was and MLP and everything yet, but I was thinking about playing rec, and that was it. And then I was in Turkey this year for a tennis tournament. And I missed playing pickleball, and that was all I could think about. I was making jokes. I was like, I wish I brought my paddles. Um... And I was gone for, like, a month or two, I think. And a month or two without pickleball felt awful to me after learning about it. And haven't done that in two and a half years. Yeah. I can't imagine doing that now. I could never. Um, And there was an earthquake in Turkey, and it was a really bad experience. And 
I just, I realized that I wanted to do what I loved and that was pickleball. And I came home and I started training like every single day. Um, and I found out about all the tournaments. I learned about PPA in like January and I just started watching it all the time from then. So when I was in Turkey, I could at least watch pickleball, um, even though I couldn't play. And then I played my first tournament in March against Annalie. Jared might have commented on that, but we we were that we that's where I met you. I met you in Austin. Well, that was in Austin, right? In Daytona. It was the in Daytona. That. Did you okay, did so you? And have, then the next week, did you happen to see the tweet that I may have tweeted? Yes, I, I saw it. It made me really sad. Um, I'm, I, I I apologize. Did you see Did you see my response? Did you see my response to it? Yes, I did. I was okay. like, they did you see up to it? It was nice. You swear that was my, my the quote retweet was my quote retweet, Jason, where I said I just did it a couple of days right after I said I was wrong. Did you see that? Okay, good. I saw everything. I was reading okay. every comment, every little thing that people were saying. I was a tropical depression. Um, I feel <laughs> I feel terrible now. I apologize. Know. I mean, I lost badly. Like, I understand. It makes sense. Like, I couldn't even hit a ball in the court. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where I was standing on the court, what was going on. So I was just so embarrassed to have played that match in the first place. When I found out I was playing her, I wanted to cry. I was like, can someone please explain the rules to me before I went out on court? I was begging a ref. Um, but I didn't well, know so, that. Yeah, so that's interesting because when we met in Austin, you told me I was sitting with you, and and you said to me, I said, "How's it going?" I, like I knew who you were, and I knew that you know I knew what had happened last week, and and I said, "How's it going?" You're like, "I don't even know the rules. Like I don't know when I'm supposed to serve. I don't know when I'm supposed to wait for the ref to say the score, or if a ball comes on the court, I don't know what's happening." And you felt very like you know very anxious and and you know unsure of yourself. So to think of that was in March. Yeah. Fast forward now, not even six months, you're killing it. It's amazing. I mean, and now you've redeemed yourself, especially against Anna Lee, and we'll get to that in a second. But just congratulations. Like, what a fun journey of doing the thing that you love uh, and being able to do it so well. So that's just yeah, awesome. Thank you. Like, when I was playing, I was playing a lot of rec, and I was messing around. So where I was on the court didn't really matter. Everyone else knew. So I kind of just let them do everything. And I just was there playing. Um, and then I never played singles. So I had no idea how the single scoring worked whatsoever. But everyone said coming from tennis, I needed to play. So I did. So coming from the, the world of tennis, and you had this, you know, this horrible experience of being in Turkey during that earthquake, which was a devastating, that was the big earthquake, right? That was like 60,000 people passed. Yeah. Um, not to bring, not to be a downer, but I, I was just googling that, and there was an earthquake today in Turkey, a small oh, one. Yeah. yeah, but uh, but when I when I looked at that, I was like, oh gosh, it brought back I'm sure some horrific memories. Um, but so you're in this terrible situation. You you you, you want to get away from it. Uh, tennis really doesn't matter. You just want to get home. You want to be safe. You want to be with family. I'm sure. Um, and and then you come home and you have to tell your parents, who are big tennis people, that you want to play pickleball. How does that conversation go? So my dad lives in Thailand. I don't really speak to him very much. Um, he's a professional tennis coach, so he is on the court all day long for tennis. He watches tennis all day. Um, so we're doing two completely different things, but we're doing it the same way. Um, but we don't really speak to each other a lot. The time difference is absolutely crazy. And my mom, she was pretty supportive of it. She was just like, I don't really remember what she was saying to me. I think I, I acted like I was slowly easing into it. I was like, I'm going to tennis practice, and <laughs> I'd be at pickleball. And I think I was telling a lot of people that for a while. Um, the only person who knew I was going full-time in pickleball was my tennis coach. He was insanely supportive of it because he saw how much I loved it. And he's like, just go full in. And he was one of the most supportive people in my life. Like, not just for tennis, but all around. He's been, like, a father, brother to me, whatever. But um, he was definitely one of the people who's the most supportive in my journey to pickleball. 
And then when my mom heard how good I was getting at pickleball, then she was very supportive of it, especially. Um, she was like, oh, you're happier. That's weird. And you're doing really good at this. Like, what's going on? It was really funny. So That's great. Uh, so, so, well, let me ask you a question. Why did you not like tennis? Well, what about tennis were you just over? There was nothing I liked about tennis except for traveling. <laughs> I loved being in Paris and Thailand and all these foreign countries, but um, tennis was just so tough um, mentally and physically. I just I went to one of my massage therapists today for like I think the first time since I started playing pickleball, and she was just in shock how like good my body is um, compared to when I was playing tennis. I'd have to go see her like every week in so much pain from my calves, hamstrings, shoulders, everything. And now playing pickleball, I feel completely fine. Um, but yeah, mentally, like traveling alone on the tour was really tough. I went to my first international tournament alone at 13 years old. Wow. And it was just a really scary situation at such a young age. But um, I had to mature really fast and get used to those things. And... You're never really around the same people anymore. Um, so it's like you spend a week or two with people and then you don't see them again for a few years. Uh, most of my friends I don't see for years at a time when I was playing on the tour. It was just a really bad experience for me and I just really did not enjoy it. It's crazy when you said that you were kind of telling people that you were going to tennis practice, but playing pickleball it's like you had this like relationship with tennis and you were kind of like cheating on it and, and I like that yeah. you finally come out and you're like I'm a pickleball player you know chalk one up for pickleball right there yeah I was still trying to take some pictures at tennis and act like I was still playing um but I was not playing tennis at all even last year when I played some rec and pickleball I was trying not to tell my mom about it um so she didn't really know but yeah, I was definitely hiding the fact that I was playing pickleball, especially from other tennis players. I was really embarrassed when I first started. Um, but yeah, now I'm absolutely in love. I tell everyone I play. And so it's funny about that with, you know, I, I always tell the joke that I never li lie to my wife. The only time I lie to my wife is when I'm going to pickleball for the second time. And she's like, wait, didn't you play this morning? I'm like, oh, no, I, I had a meeting. And, you know, and then it's like I, I have to come clean and yeah. be like, OK, I'm playing twice today. All right, fine. Uh but it's funny how pickleball does that to you. It really has a certain pull and it just, it makes us, you know, fall in love with something again, which I think is, you know, the beauty of this thing is that we get a second chance to compete. Uh, and I'm an old guy and I feel like I have an opportunity to go back and learn something new and compete again. And I, I kind of thought that was over for me, uh, but it's fun yeah. and we all love I it. I went and really far into hiding it. I even played an event here in Boca, a tennis tournament. <laughs> I had not played for, I think, weeks, maybe, maybe even like a month or so, not even picked up the racket, and I went to go play. I didn't even warm up for my match, and I just went out there. I ended up being sick that day, which was really unfortunate, and I just played that match. I played three games, and I started getting sick on the court, and I walked off, and that was my last tennis tournament. <laughs> wow. It sounds, it sounds gonna be. It sounds fitting. I feel like that's a great movie scene when you uh, when you change the world of pickleball and they make a movie about you. That's going to be a pivotal scene. I like Probably. It. That'd be really funny. So let's talk about this. You had a great run uh, th this past week and at, at Takea. You were able to knock off Anna Lee. Fantastic match. You, you, you got the first game and then she came back in the second game and, and won that second game 11-2, I think. Uh, and I thought, okay, well, that's probably it. And then yeah. you came back and, and, and rolled her in, in game three. Obviously, she had a, a kind of strange reaction to the whole thing. Tell, tell us how it all unfolded for you. You know, Let's talk about the match first and then the reaction afterwards. But I thought you handled everything with such grace. It was really, you know, it, you're, you're mature beyond your years. And it was really a pleasure to watch you win that and then handle it afterwards. Tell us, how did that all go down? So I actually warmed up with her that morning, which is really funny. Um, I warmed up twice, once with my friend Dominique, and then I warmed up once with Anna Lee. 
the draw was changed a few times before um, we played our matches. So I had no idea who I was playing against. Um, I did not know who I was playing until I was actually called on court that day. And my head was just kind of all over the place. It's kind of nerve wracking when you don't know who you're playing against. Um, And I went out there, I played my first match. I really struggled. And then I played my second match. Um, It was also pretty close. And then I realized I was playing Anna Lee. And (laughs) who did you play in those other two matches? I don't know the first girl's name. Um, but she's from like Taiwan or Taipei or something. Um, and then the second match I played my friend Dominique and we were making jokes about doing like a joint retirement. So neither of us had to play her. On Dominique, court. Dominique Schaefer, correct? Yes. Nice. Um, Cause we were just like, we do not want to do that. I did not want to do that again on center court. Um, first I was like, my goal is to just like win one or two points so I can just like laugh about it and like cheer to the crowd as a joke. And I told all my friends to come watch so that when I win one point, I can cheer and go crazy. Um, and then people are like, no, give yourself some more room, whatever. I was like, okay, my goal is to win five points in this match. That is all five points. Um, and then, yeah, I spoke to my mom before the match. She's like, it cannot be any worse than it was last time. So it's like, go for it. And yeah, I went out there and played and I won the first point and I was like, this is weird. I didn't get like my big point to win and cheer whatever. Um, and then the point just kept rolling over. To be honest, I felt like I was playing bad the whole match. Um, but when I, I look back, obviously, like I was playing really well. Um, so it felt really weird for me on the court. Um, I was obviously kind of nervous with all those people watching. I was like, okay, I'm up 2-0. Now I'm going to lose like 2-0, whatever. Um, but yeah, I won the first set. I couldn't really believe it. I was just trying to keep my calm. My mom was like talking to her a lot on the court. And she would just take timeouts. And it's like a weird situation for me. When I see someone taking a timeout and they're like talking to someone, I'm usually there on my bench by myself. I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to drink my water and chill, I guess. Um, and then the second game came Well, hang around. on. So, so you, won the, you won the first game and then you're on your bench. And are you thinking like, are you still thinking like, I'm going to get rolled in the next game? Oh, or are yeah. You like, For sure. or, so you weren't like, I can beat this girl. Like, I'm going to beat her. I mean, there was probably like a glimpse in my head where I was like, okay, maybe you can win this match. But the majority of my thoughts were, you are still going to lose this match. I was like, okay, she does this all the time. She'll like lose a game and then win the match easy, obviously. Um, But I realized there was a really bad spot on the court. So I tried to take advantage of that. Well, that's further in the match. But I think she realized that too, and she was hitting a lot to it in the second game. So it was really difficult for me to hit the ball. Um... I was also still in a bit of shock, I guess. Um, And then I lost that game and I was just like, okay, maybe it's over now. We switched sides and then I kind of tried to take advantage of that spot also. And then I think I went up 6-0 and we switched sides and I felt a lot of momentum. And I'm like, okay, if you just keep pressing and you keep putting the pressure, you can actually do well in this match. So I just really went for my shots. Um, I tried to go a lot deep middle to take away her angles as much as I could because she's really good at those. Um, so then I just tried to press as much as I could. And then I think it was like 9-1 or something and she was up and I think I lost like one or two points. And I was like, okay, you know what you need to do. Get it together, stay calm and just go for your shots. And that's what I did. And I somehow won the match. Um, I remember I yelled, what- I remember yeah. you were up when, when it was nine three. Um, I think I turned it on like late. I think I, someone, I think I saw you, the, the score. I, someone told me and you were up. I think you were actually up six Oh, when I tuned in and then it was nine three. I thought it was eight two or something. And then eight three or nine three. And I was like, all right, this is about to, Annalise's going to win this match. Like, yeah. And then, and then when it got to 10, they panned to Lee and Lee looked very concerned. Yeah, uh, and that's when I was like, Annalie's gonna lose this match. Like it, it was like, sh- like she's the dragon. Like you slayed the dragon. Like she is the goat. Like that is, it was crazy. 
Yeah, I heard her start to pump herself up a lot in the match, especially in the third game. Um, so I think when you hear people doing that, you know that they're a little bit upset or worried. So I think that gave me a bit more confidence too. Um, yeah, so when I saw her doing that, I was like, okay, you really need to put the foot on the gas right now, especially when she's trying to pump herself up and pump the crowd up. Her mom walked on the court at some point in the match. I was really confused because I didn't know if you're allowed to do that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like in those moments, you know, that you have a decent chance and that's when I was really trying to press. I didn't want to yell, come on at any time in the match. Cause I was like, okay, like I don't want to embarrass myself to say, come on and then lose the next 11 points in a row or something. Um, but yeah, then I won the match and I decided to say, come on. And I turn around and look and she's jumping up and down on the court. And I start to walk up to the net and she's like, yeah, good job beating me. Thanks for beating me. Like very, very sarcastically. Um, and then I hear her like mumble stuff off. And then she like threw the paddle towards her mom, or, like passed it to her and just like walked off the court cheering. I was just very confused in that moment. But there was no point because the way it looked on the, the way it looked on TV was, you know, she put her hands up almost like she had won. Right. And so if you're watching without the sound on, you would have thought she won the match and that was it. Uh, I yeah. almost thought that going back to our conversation from Austin, I almost thought for a second, maybe you would think for a second did I wait, I did win. Right. Like this is I won. Right. Not. Is this how it works? I feel like there was like even that weirdness in the moment of like just the surrealness. You just you know, you went into this match not thinking you had a chance. Then you do it and she's cheering like she won. And. I, I could see yeah. it just being such a weird, weird feeling. It was just weird, but I could hear her. So then I was just like, I was like, why is she saying this to me? Cause like, she was obviously being super sarcastic. I'm like, yeah, thanks for beating me. Good job beating me. And I was like, this is a lot. Okay. Um, and then I just went up and touched her paddle. I didn't know what she was going to do. I've seen a lot of stuff in tennis. I've seen a 16 year old girl. She, she could have been younger, 14, 15, whatever, throw up, her racket at her opponent when she shook hands. Um, so You're I've ready. seen a lot of things. So I was ready for anything in that moment. I really, I really <laughs> felt for you in that moment. I mean, I, I remember you the kind of, you had an expression of like, what, what did I do? Like, I, I don't remember. That's what it felt like you were kind of saying to yourself. Um, I felt bad. Um, Cause I yelled, come on. And I was like, okay, like she's 16. Like this is probably really tough for her, but like, I was holding it in the whole match. Like I felt like I kind of had to do it at the end. Yeah. Um, so when I saw her reacting like that, I felt kind of bad. So that's why when I was walking away, I was confused and a little bit sad. I was like, I can't imagine how she's feeling right now. Um, so people gave me a lot of crap for that because they're just like, you shouldn't feel bad. Like yeah. you won the match. It's whatever. Um, but I still take someone's feelings into consideration and like, I was that age once I've had things like that happen to me and it's painful and it hurts. And especially if people are talking so bad about you after the match, like that is just an awful experience that no one should have to deal with. I, I uh, had heard that there was a lot of the crowd that was kind of rooting for you. Is that, do you remember that to be true? Um, I think so. Um, there was like one section that was cheering for me a lot. Um, and then I had someone like a fan that watched, was watching all my matches come out. He was being super loud. And so that was probably a big factor in the match too. Um, people really did not like that. Um, but yeah, again, like I'd had things like that happen to me in tennis and it would hurt. I had a match in Guatemala where the ref wouldn't let me leave the court. I was feeling sick. Everyone was cheering every time I fell or missed a shot, double faulted. And I got sick on the court and these people are recording and laughing. And like, it was just an awful experience. And I'm like, I can't imagine having to deal with this again. And I'm seeing her go through it. And I'm just like, it's bringing back a lot of memories, you know? Yeah. So let me ask you something. <clears throat> you talked about every time you fell and this is in tennis. But a couple of weeks ago, you were yeah. playing, I think it was Georgia, on a court that yeah. you must have fallen 20 times. Like, it looked like yeah. you were on skates. What was going on in that match? So, in general, I fall a lot. Like, I slide and move around. 
Um, and then these courts of your city were a little extra slick. So a lot of people were following. So you can imagine how much I was following. You probably saw it. Um, but I broke both of my toenails in half on my big toes. And I was just in, like, I did that in Denver, I think. And I was just in so much pain. I was trying not to stand on the front of my toes. So I was kind of running weird. And then I kept slipping and I rolled my ankle countless amount of times that day I ended up straining my hamstring I think in like the earlier part of the day and it was just an awful experience I was in so much pain I was falling and sliding everywhere it was a disaster <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a bizarre match to watch I, I did watch that and I was I, I was very confused it almost felt like something was wrong with the cord or wrong with your shoes or I, I couldn't figure out what was going on yeah, so I had to keep retying my shoes because they were, like, super loose. Usually Nikes have an extra spot for you to put the shoelaces through. I don't know how to explain that, but these ones didn't. So they are super loose, and I, that's why I kept rolling my ankle. And everyone was giving me crap about it after. Um, but I was like, if I did not tie my shoes as much as I did, I would have broke my ankle or probably my knee on the court that day. Crazy. Let me so, let me ask you let me ask you a question about the Anna Lee match. Uh, kind of going back to that. Have you did you and you, you can say I uh, don't no comment. But have you spoken to her since that match? So um, first, I saw the tweet online. Um, I was just like on Discord and on Facebook, and I see the tweet everywhere. I'm like, okay, this is weird. I was like, is this real? Um, so which, which, which tweet which tweet the, where she apologized where she, she apologized and she's like good luck Tyra um, and then I think a little bit later she sent me a text and I responded and then I just didn't hear anything from her um, and then she hasn't said a word to me since then um, even at the site but her mom has been super nice to me she wished me good luck she said congrats after I played um yeah. Okay. Sounds like it hopefully has worked itself out. And then, you know, I, I, I try to cut some slack and I say she's a 16 year old girl going through a lot, doing, learning how to go through, particularly losing in front of everybody. And, and her brand yeah. is winning. And so that's really hard because you're not used to it. You, you feel like you're letting people down. And so I, I'm, you know, I'm I'm very hopeful she'll learn from this and and you know be a a better you know athlete and better sport because of it. So she also was yeah, going. She also was years. going. She was also going up against. Uh, she was trying to get break Simone's record. I think that tournament. That's right. Yeah. So I heard about that later. So I mean, she had an insane amount of pressure, but. There, these are obviously rumors. I have no idea whatsoever, but people said that she was bickering with her mom in the match. I was trying not to pay attention to anything she was actually saying. Um, so I didn't really listen to her and her, or her mom, but people said that she was bickering with her during the match. Um, so I think that probably played a big factor in it. She was probably just like trying to spite her mom a little bit or something. So I don't think it really had anything to do with me at all. So there's definitely no hard feelings. I mean, I completely understand. Like, it's a bad situation. I'm sure we're going to be okay. We usually train together here in South Florida sometimes. So we'll see what happens. But I think we'll be fine. Good. Um, so let me ask you something. We have, you know, we, we hear the stories of tennis. And we know the amount of pressure that are on these kids that are coming up. And I think that it, it's a parent thing also, right? The parents are putting a ton of pressure on their kids uh, to almost a breaking point. Um, and how do we not let pickleball become that, you know, I think that as money comes in and more success of the game in general takes place, I think parents are going to start to see like, Oh, wow. You know what? We could switch over and be in pickleball. And, and I, I worry that some of that fun and joy that you're experiencing will be lost if we start to treat it like tennis. How, do you I have any ideas lot, of how we can stop that? I'm really not sure. Um, 
it, one, I'd say like no coaching, but then one of the best parts is being able to have your friends come out and like help you and coach you and everything. Um, but even my first event in Daytona, I played against this girl and her dad sitting on the side of the court. Every time she misses a ball, you can hear him frustrated with her and upset. And I'm like, this is, how can we have fun on the court? How is she supposed to play if you're getting upset every time she misses a ball or her partner misses a ball? It was like, this looks like tennis to me right now. And I absolutely did not like that. I felt really bad for her. Um, and I definitely don't want to see that come to pickleball. Yeah. I know Noah Rubin, you know, he had, was pretty open about his tennis experience. Um, and then I think he came to pickleball and, you know, I don't think he was really, I don't think he really had the success that he thought he'd have out of the gate, but he said, you know, I've seen a lot of similarities to, to tennis and pickleball. And I don't know if he meant that, but I, I too hope that it doesn't go that way. I'm seeing more, uh, father, parents and father, a lot of fathers, uh, at kids matches and, uh, it's that would be really unfortunate. And also I play with Jason and he's very mean to me on the court, you know, and it, it, it's very, it's very hard to, 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 to come back from that, to be perfectly honest. So. You know, Jason. there's not really many ways you can stop it. Like the parents are going to come to the match. Like you can't stop them from coaching their kids. It's like, it's a really difficult situation. You just have to hope that people are coming in to pick a ball for the right reasons, but everyone's getting into it now. So it's a little difficult. It's true. And so are, you're playing uh, Major League Pickleball with uh, – what team are you on? I'm on Miami Pickleball Club with Federico, Tyson, and Mary. That's a good team. That's a, that's a pretty awesome team. Uh, so this will be – you were you premier last time? No, you were challenger last time? No, challenger. Challenger, yeah. I was in the so, shuffle draft. Correct. Right. So, I mean, you came in. That's crazy. Like you weren't even playing at the first draft, right? Yeah. At the first draft, I didn't really know about MLP. So that's I, I like to joke about that so much. I'm like, this is so crazy. I'm like, I wish I knew about this before. I would have started training a year ago um, and things would have probably been a lot different by now. But yeah, it, it, and it's all great. coming back. It's all coming back to me now because I, I think what happened was you got picked up in the shuffle draft. Mm-hmm. Then you play at Anna Lee, right? Yeah, I got. And, yeah, I got. And, and, and I had heard all this stuff. I had heard all this stuff. I was, and everyone's like, "She's the next big thing." And then I tweeted that, and now I feel terrible because you're you seem so lovely. Um, but uh, that's how it all went down. Not that it matters, but I just remember, like, kind of now it's it's all coming back to me. But I, I think I agree with Jason. I think it's wild. Now you're in the premiere playing with. The, the most electric man in sports, Federico, who's a total goat, love Fed, yeah. and Mary, who has been like, you know, she has total flashes of brilliance. I think that's a, 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 a team that's going to contend. Yeah, I think we'll be a solid team. Um, we're going to have some practices, so I guess we'll find out how we all mesh together. That's great. And are you going to be practicing down in South Florida? I guess Miami, right? So fly mm-hmm. them down to Miami. Um, I think we're going to be practicing at some tournaments. Um, it's just going to be a lot easier for all of us and our schedules. Um, they had two guys back-to-back, 12 and 13, so they have some pretty big shots on the team. So I think they're really busy, but I'm always free. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the tournaments will be the best place. And who, who's the GM? Is it Johnny Goldberg? <laughs> Johnny's um, our coach. It's... Um, okay. Jamie Dugood is his last name. Okay. We love, we love Johnny. Big yeah. Bomb. Johnny's awesome. I think be a lot of fun on the court. He's like, a, sure. he's like the X factor. Sure. It's like, uh, he, he's like another player out there. Mental, a mental assassin. I told him if we bring out Jeff Warnick, um, that we probably won't lose a match. The two of them together, I, saw I mean, that, that will absolutely rattle people's. Yeah, those I've two heard together about this guy, Jeff Warnick, so much. 
and I never actually met him until the last MLP. He was sitting right behind me with Johnny. And I just hear these people absolutely trashing everyone on the court. And it was the funniest thing ever. And I think they, they're they literally the reasons the Fives won some of their games so easy. Um, they were definitely in all their opponents' heads. And it was just the funniest thing ever. I've seen Johnny and Jeff Warnick at last year's Atlanta PPA. They were harassing people while they were playing and bring people to yeah. tears. The Johnson it brothers. Was insane. Could have been. I'm not going to say who it was. I Could will say because I I because I'm, fr- I'm friends with Yates and Hunter. It was the Johnson brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I saw and I saw why Wyatt Stone struggled with it. Uh, Wyatt Hayden. Hayden, Wyatt and Hayden and the Johnson brothers. It was insane. They were they were going crazy. It was great. It was great fun to watch. I mean, I don't know if it's uh, the best mannered pickleball I've ever seen, but it was something to watch. No doubt. All right, Tara, this is the time of the podcast where we ask you if you have any questions for us. Anything goes. No, I don't think I really have any questions. Um... You got nothing. All right, that's fine. while, While you think on it, I have another. I have one last question for you. Do you now have the confidence going into these next tournaments that you can be the best player in the world? I, what I have to say about everything is I won one tournament, which I'm, I'm insanely thankful for. I'm so happy about it. Um, but it's one tournament and we have like two a month for the whole year. (laughs) So there's a lot of events. So for me to win, I think is amazing. I beat a top player, but I don't think that means I'm going to be the next Anna Lee or that I'm going to win every tournament I play now. People are like, we have the next number one player in the world. I don't think one tournament defines any player in any sport. Um, So I'm not putting any pressure on myself. I'm still pretty new to the sport I'm trying to learn all these things singles is not my favorite thing in the world and it's a little difficult so I'm not going to put any pressure on myself I just want to keep playing and having fun if I'm not having fun out there it's just going to be the same as tennis and that's not what I want I don't want to put so much pressure on myself like I did in that sport so if I don't win another event for a year I'm okay with it I just want to make sure I'm having fun out there on the court good for you answer I agree. Hey, by the way, you were what paddle were you using out there, Selkirk? I was using. I had a Selkirk bag, a Solar paddle, a diadem grip on my racket, um, and my paddle was agent. absolutely falling. I was I was trying my best to play the matches. I had to keep so much tape to keep the lead tape on my paddle. It was it was a fun event. <laughs> So you, you, don't have a, you don't have a player. spot You're not a Selkirk player. No, I'm not a Selkirk player. Um, they sent me some stuff, so I have it. And then Yola sent me some paddles, so I use that. Diadem gave me some grips, so that what I, that's what I was using. I'm just all over the place. I don't have a sponsor. I just got a clothing sponsor the day that the tournament started. Um, but, yeah. Shout out. That's Stack, right? Yes, Stack. Okay. Shout out Stack. Let's get let's you, get some let's get some sponsorships in here. We need a paddle sponsor. Yeah, I really do. My paddles are. I have no more for my next event, so I need to get some. I we, we and, and you want you want to you, you want to play with the Solaire? Um, I just got used to the Solaire, so I've been using it. Um, I didn't really want to switch paddles since I was playing so many events. Um, I was trying to play everything I could. Um, but obviously if I see a good deal or something, I'm going to try out another paddle and adjust to it. All right. All right. We'll, we'll try to hook that up for you. We're, we know some people. Thank you. I absolutely love the Yola. Everyone's telling me I need to try the new one, but I'm so stuck on the Solaire. Um, I used I to play with, I used to, I used to play with the Solaire and then I played with the Colin John Scorpius and no. I'm only a, you know, I think I'm like a four, six, seven right now, but, but that paddle is amazing. 
the, the Scorpius. Everyone like more pop and spin and everything. I was like, I definitely don't need any more pop and doubles right now. Um, maybe singles, but. I have one other question. Sorry, one other question. Uh, a lot of people were commenting how fast you are. Yeah. And how much court you can cover. Um, what do you, is that a tennis thing? Or are you just fast or are you, what? I'm just, I'm really fast. That is something I'll say about myself. I will give myself that. Um, my dad used to run track in like the junior Olympics um, or something they do in like South American Olympics. Um, and he was super fast. I got that from him. And then I was always like that in tennis. I just ran side to side. That was my game, getting every ball back, slicing the ball. Um, I had a really unconventional tennis game, and it was just me running side to side all day long. So I brought that with me to pick a ball. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. Well, Tyra, thank you so much for your time. Uh, really, we're so happy for you. I mean, it's so, it's so awesome to see new faces come into the game and to have the success that you're having and to hear your story of not being the happiest with tennis and being able to find something in pickleball that gives you joy. I think that gives all of us joy. So happy that you found it continued success and we'll be cheering you on from the sideline. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You Thanks, got Sarah. It. Take care.